Hello again, everybody, and welcome back to my channel. My name is Sarah, and today we are going to talk about how to propagate Hoyas. So I've been getting a lot of questions lately in the comments on my Instagram about different types of Hoya, how to propagate them, what's the best way to propagate different types of Hoyas. So instead of addressing each type of Hoya individually, I thought today I'd give some general tips as well as a few little specifics. If you are new here, welcome. I talk a lot about houseplants, especially Hoyas, um, some philodendrons, things like that. So if that sounds interesting to you, make sure you hit that subscribe button. I'd love to have you stick around. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into today's video. So the first thing I thought I'd address is when is a good time to propagate your Hoyas? If you are anything like me, my Hoyas grow pretty well for me year round and they also root up pretty decently year round. Um, they might root a little bit slower in the winter time, but I get plenty of light in here. I like to keep my house nice and warm. Um, so if you can meet those conditions and your Hoyas are growing okay for you through the winter, I don't think there's a particular time of year that you need to worry about. In general though, I would say to wait until your Hoya is pretty well established before you're taking any cuttings. So if you've been growing it from a small cutting, you'll wanna make sure that it's really well rooted and it's got lots of new growth before you start taking cuttings of your own. I have a couple examples of plants that would be more than happy if I took a cutting. I have my Curseii here, lots and lots of growth, lots of tendrils going on. Same thing here with my Numeraloides. Um, both have plenty of growth and they are ready to take cuttings. An example of something I may not want to take a cutting from for a while is my Callistifolia. This is a brand new plant to me. Um, so even if it started putting on a couple leaves, it's a really high in demand Hoya, but I'm still probably not going to take cuttings uh, for quite a while just because I want to make sure that it has quite a bit of new growth before I start to set it back a little bit. So you've determined your plant has plenty of new growth. It can sacrifice a couple of leaves. How do you take a cutting of a Hoya? This is going to vary a little bit based on the type of Hoya that you're cutting. So I have a couple different examples here and I've got a ton of cuttings that I personally have. Um, so let's just jump right in. So I'll use my Callistifolia again. This is an example of a more woody stem style Hoya. So I've got lots of woody stem style here. You've got your Numeraloides, that's got a nice thick woody stem. Um, probably your Carnosas are going to have a little more of a woody stem, as well as your Pubicalyx. So any of those, you are going to be perfectly fine taking a segment of the stem. As you can see there, there is a segment of the stem and then one to two leaves. As long as you have, as long as you have a stem segment like this, you are perfectly fine with either one or two leaves, but don't take a cutting and um, just take this part of the petiole. You definitely want to make sure that you have a piece of stem. So if I were going to take a cutting of my Numeraloides, I might take, I'd be okay taking this section right here, this little top section, but I would probably prefer to take it a little further down here or down here. I've got a couple more examples here that I can show you that are rooted. This one is my Pubicalyx. I believe this is the Black Philippine. It's a chimera, so it will hopefully have blooms that always have like some half and half or that might bloom one or another. Um, I'm super excited about this one, but as you can see, a nice big segment of stem here. It's got three leaves on it. It's got a growth point. So that's a very generous cutting right there. Here's an obovata cutting that I took that when I took it, it was just these two leaves right here. You can see since it's been rooting, it's put on a little baby leaf and a nice thick bit of stem. So if you have that much stem, you give yourself a little bit of room to work with. You can see it's got some nice long roots on it as well. So that's your more woody style stem Hoya. So the next type of Hoya I wanna talk about is your more small leafed type of Hoya. That might be your Curtsii, right? Nice, long, tenderly, or your Linearis. Again, nice, long, tendril, small leaves. For Hoyas like this, you're going to want to take more than just a couple of leaves. You so with something like the Curtsii, you probably could take a small two leaf cutting. It does have a little bit of a woody stem to it, but you're not gonna leave yourself a lot of room for error. So with something like this, I would definitely take a much longer tendril and try to root that. So if I was taking a cutting of my Curtsii, I probably would take something right in here, maybe a little bit shorter if I'm not feeling so generous, but I'd wanna leave myself one, two, three, four, five nodes, something like that. Remember, I'm gonna be probably losing a couple of these leaves along the way. I want to make sure I have enough stem 
to work with. Same thing with a Hoya Bella. Um, I've seen people sell just a couple of nodes of a Bella, but again, I would prefer to work with something a little bit longer like this, taking a longer stem like so. And the last type of Hoya I wanna talk about is your really thin leafed, but kind of larger leafed Hoya. So that might be like your Australis, your Polynura, something like that. Um, the Australis does have quite a thick stem to it. So again, you could probably take a two leaf cutting. Same thing with the Polynura. I see very often a two leaf or a one node cutting sold of that. Um, so that's another very common way you would want to cut it. Something like right there. If I'm cutting one of my thinner leaf Hoyas, I'm definitely going to take, if I'm taking a two leaf cutting, I'm taking it right in here. If I'm taking a four leaf cutting, it might be down there. Um, this one right here would be another great place to take that cutting. So you wanna take it down here and just before the next set of leaves, leaving yourself plenty of stem along the way. So hopefully that's helpful as far as what a cutting might look like, where to take a cutting on different types of Hoya plants. The next thing I wanna talk about is what to root your Hoya in. As you can probably see here, I have tons of different rooting methods and a lot of it varies for me based on the type of Hoya that I'm rooting and sometimes just how, how much I'm around the house, what I have on hand, those kinds of things as well. So my two favorite ways of rooting Hoyas are in Lekka and just sticking it in water. I have rooted Hoyas up in sphagnum moss before. I enjoy it, it rooted, I haven't lost any Hoyas rooting it that way, um, but it's not my preferred method. I definitely prefer rooting in water or LECA. So how do you decide which one to root it in? So for my woodier stems, I definitely recommend rooting it up in LECA, especially if you don't have a lot of stem to work with. LECA or even moss is going to be a better bet for you. You're gonna have a little bit better time. Sometimes with those really short stems, like when you're ordering the really rare Hoyas, they don't give you very much stem. You're gonna want something that it will hold, hold it in place. You're not having to you know, worry about the water level, those kinds of things. So rooting it in LECA, I often get asked, how much water do I use? You can see this one I just topped off today. It's a little over halfway full of water. That might be a bit much, but I treat it pretty much like I do rooting anything up in water. And especially with such a small container and it's the end of summer, um, it's definitely going through that water very quickly and it's drying out really quickly. So it's not too much water. I would shoot for somewhere around half, maybe a third, but I usually shoot for right around half. Another question I get asked quite often when I'm rooting in LECA is if I use any nutrients. I don't use any nutrients when I'm just rooting. It's almost like water rooting. I just use LECA as the medium, again, kind of just to hold the plant up. You could add a very, very small amount of nutrients, maybe like your Super Thrive, something like that. Um, I just don't. I, I just kind of keep some water in there until it's rooted and I'm ready to transfer it into the full semi-hydro. So any of your woodier stemmed Hoyas are going to do really well in LECA. They're going to do fantastically. And I like that the LECA helps to hold the rooting up in place. So again, if you have a shorter stem, might be a good option for you. Your woody stems can also do perfectly fine in water like this Pubicalyx Black Philippine definitely is putting on lots of roots and it is in water. Um, I find water's a little bit easier to ignore. I don't have to keep my eye on it quite as much. So if you're not home often, um, might be a good choice for you to just stick it in some water and you can just let it sit for a while. The LECA I do have to keep an eye on a little bit more and make sure it's topped off probably every five to six days, depending on how much light it's getting. Your thinner stemmed Hoyas, your Hoya Bella, your Curtsii, your Affinity Bertonii, those kinds of things, I would highly recommend rooting up in water. I have had the best success rooting Bella in water, and this is one that I just leave. This one's probably been sitting in water for almost two months now. It's been a stubborn rooter. Um, usually my Bella's rode up in a week. This particular stem though, took it at the same time as a bunch of other ones, and it's just kind of a late rooter, if you will. Um, so I definitely stick my Bellas, my Affinity Bertonii's. Um, I get a lot of questions about how to root this particular one, the Curtsii. Um, again, I would stick it in water. That's the best way, that's the best luck that I've had. Um, so anything that kind of has those smaller leaves, thinner stems, I would recommend sticking in water. And your thinner leaved, your Australis, your Polynura. I've had really good success. I always root my Polynura when I take cuttings in LECA. 
but I've also had, I took a cutting of the Australis Lisa, stuck that one in some sphagnum moss. That one rooted up really well there. That one was an example of when I didn't have, I probably had a cutting that had like that much stem on it. I just stuck it in the moss because I didn't have a lot of stem and it rooted up just fine there. So these can kind of go either way. I think they'd probably root up okay in water, but I find some of them, um, like the Australis, the Polyneura, they don't have a lot of space in between the nodes. Um, so you're definitely gonna want something like Leca or Sphagnum Moss where you don't need to have a large segment of stem. One other thing to keep in mind when taking a cutting, you might need to take off a couple of leaves. I bet this one had some leaves probably down in here somewhere. I always strip off the bottom few leaves on my Bella as well so that I have a little more stem space. Another really great example of this is my Linearis. This is another one I would recommend rooting your Linearis in water. Um, I This one, I didn't have to take off the leaves. I made these cuttings because it was missing some leaves and I didn't like the way that looked. So that's another great example of you don't want leaves down here in the water, especially if they're fuzzy, like the Linearis, like the Numeroloides, those you don't want those fuzzy parts getting into the water. And one final question I often get asked is when is it okay to plant up your Hoya after you've been rooting it? This to me is going to depend on kind of the signs that I'm getting from the plant and also what medium I'm going to plant it up in. So something like my Callistifolia, I am rooting it in Leca. I'm probably going to go ahead and keep growing it in Leca. And so this little amount of root right there, I could transfer this into a different pot and, and get it all set up in a semi-hydro format, it would be fine. That is more than enough root for what I'm going to do. It's just basically going to a different pot. But I wouldn't consider that enough root if I was going to transfer it to soil. Keeping in mind, it's probably going to lose a little bit of its root system when it's transferred over to soil. So I would want a little bit more, something a little bit more established. A great example of something that would be ready to transfer over into soil would be my Puba Calyx. That one's got a ton of root system on there. I hope you can see. That one would probably be ready to go into soil, into Leca, it's been rooting in water, so it could go over to Leca really easily. So that one's an example of something that's ready to rock and roll, it's ready to go. So I hope that you found that helpful. I feel like I was a little bit all over the place with this video. So hopefully I addressed any questions that you have. If you have any more questions, things that I didn't answer, please feel free to leave those down in the comments below. I try to get to as many specific questions about how to root different types of Hoyas the best I can. Or if you have any advice about rooting Hoyas, things that have worked well for you in your experience, you can also feel free to leave those in the comments down below. As always, thank you so much for watching. If you found today's video helpful, go ahead, leave me a thumbs up. Let me know that you enjoy this kind of content and I will see you next week with another video. Bye.